today's video, we're going to be unboxing the Weedo Mi 40. Let's go. So the other day, Weedo reached out to me and said, hey Callum, we've got this new printer out, the Mi 40, and we'd love you to review it. They'd seen a previous Weedo review that I did of their IDEX printer. You can check that here if you wish to. And they said, we'd love to get your thoughts on this printer. So here we have it here, the Weedo Mi 40 is a printer in the medium build volume size range, the medium to large 300 by 300 build plate with a 400 Z axis. It's got a 300 degree centigrade high temp all metal hot end. That's thanks to a bimetallic heat break. If we scroll down here, you'll see that there. And they've also included a hardened steel nozzle. The printer has five by five auto leveling and the bed is a flexible PEI magnetic bed so it's easily removable. They've also shouted out their touchscreen and the open source 32-bit motherboard. Direct from Weedo you can pick this printer up for $429. If you're buying on Amazon in the UK then the printer is 429 Great British Pounds but there's currently a £100 voucher on which would take it down to £329. And I'm really excited to see how it prints. Anyway, without further ado, let's smash this printer open and see what we get. So we have here the control unit, screen and bed. The Mi 40 accessory box, spool of filaments and XZ gantry. Got a lead screw here. And opening up the accessory box, we have the quick start guide and troubleshooting, the USB data cable, what will be the spool holder, power cord, some flush clutters, cable ties, allen keys, and a couple of wrenches, nuts and bolts, more nuts and bolts, a scraper, a bit of Bowden tube with a 3D printed thing on it two injection molded pieces which will probably become more clear later what they are a usb reader with the micro sd card and some end stops and cables not sure whether they are spares uh, or to be installed but we'll see shortly okay so just opening up the quick start guide here now i can see a few bits of what they're saying about this printer first of all it is a 1.75 millimeter filament choice which is sort of the standard these days and it says it can print to filaments up to a mounting temperature of 295C. As I mentioned previously, it's got a 300, 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume, and it suggests it can print up to speeds of 150 millimeters a second. I very much doubt that, but doesn't really matter. The printer supports auto leveling via a magnetic touch probe, which you can see here, and other than that, it's a fairly standard, medium to large format 3D printer. Let's get it set up. So just pulling away those pieces on the bed, I can see here that we have got a uh, removable magnetic bed, obviously to trigger the magnetic probe. It's, it's harder wearing, sort of very, very light texture to it. Right, so we're now going to install the XY gantry onto the bed, like so. And once the screws are through, tighten it up with the included Allen key. Same on the other side. Okay, now those are screwed in. We're gonna take the T-shaped aluminium profiles and tighten them to the side to provide some extra stability to the gantry. So that's these T profiles. Take the little M4 screws and the T nut. Screw the bolts through the plates with the T nuts on the other side. And then align at the side of the printer and tighten. And then the same on the other side. I personally find T nuts really fiddly, but at least it is something you only have to do once. Okay, that's the XZ gantry installed to the bed. We've now got to unwrap and install the lead screw. Pass the lead screw through the guide rail there. Make 
should roll through. Down into the lead screw coupler. I noticed the lead screw has a nice little rubber cap on the top. Um, from looking at printers in the past, this area here where the lead screw wobbles, if it's not constrained properly, does make quite a lot of noise. Well, it can do anyway. So this is this is not a nice little feature to see. Should reduce too much noise coming from that point. I'll then tighten the lead screw into the coupler and make sure it's tight on the step at the same time. And now that's rolling. It seems to roll really quite nicely. Although it is worth noting that this does just have the single. Z lead screw, it's not one on the other side. It seems rather than opting for two lead screws with two separate stepper motors, they've just opted to fully constrain uh, the, the movement in this axis with the, the roller wheels tightened on both sides of the frame. Right now we're gonna connect up the cables. So they've added a cable tie mounting point here and obviously included cable ties so you can mount the flat cables nice and tight on there and help uh, reduce the amount of movement and strain that this cable is going to be subjected to. So that's a nice touch. Installing those cables there I can't help but notice that Wido have adjusted the way this uh, filament runout sensor works only very slightly. They've added a screw into the top of this little cap here, which is great because this always used to pop off uh, during printing. So it's great that that is now constrained with a little screw. Other than that, the extruder design looks to be very similar to the uh, how it was on the previous Wido IDEX machine that I reviewed, which worked okay. We've then just got a couple more cables to plug in the y-axis stepper motor and the y-axis end stop switch. We're then going to install the filament holder. Putting the filament holder up on the top here, up here like so, and then we can take filament onto it allowing it to roll over and down into the filament Bowden tube. We're then going to insert the Bowden tube into the extruder. That's here at this end here. Into the extruder drive gear and then into the extruder this size. So just from pushing the Bowden tube into the hot end there, I can feel that we've probably got the Bowden tube going about halfway into the extruder. Um, not right to the end, so we've got a sort of partially metal hot end. So we're relying on the Bowden tube at the top, but then it ends turning into a fully metal hot end at the bottom, which is where we're getting that 295 degrees C. We've now come to step eight, which is loading the filament, and it's made it clear what this thing is, which I discovered earlier, which is the piece of Bowden tube with a little printed cylinder around it. And actually what that is, is a guide tube for this end. So I'm pushing that on there. And what that's going to do is prevent the wear and tear. So even though this extruder drive gear is plastic, which I normally don't like, it doesn't matter in this case because filament is moved to the outside. So uh, that will prevent the wear and tear directly down onto the entrance of the extruder drive gear. So that's good. I'm going to push the filament through the bottom tube. through the extruder drive gear. Uh, it does make it slightly more difficult to load the filament because of the extended Bowden tube at the edge. It then says to check the tightness of the belts, just manually, that it has a degree of elasticity, which it does, but it doesn't say anything about if there isn't a degree of elasticity, what you're supposed to do if it's too flappy there isn't a way to adjust the tightness of the bed in the belt, so um, you'd have to print a, a little tightening clip. For the x-axis, again you can check the belt, uh, and that one does have a very easy way to adjust the tension of the belt, which is nice. So at least it is considered for the x-axis, just not the y-axis. Also going to want to check the voltage on the side that that is set to the correct amount of volts. That's on the other side here, 
and it is now indeed uh, 230 volts which is fine for the UK. Now we have to check the alignment of the gantry so that's what these block things for these block things were for we have to put them down here on both sides and push the gantry down so that it touches the positioning block and we're basically just checking that it touches the positioning block on both sides which it does it says if one side touches the positioning block and the other side does not use the 2.5 millimeter L-shaped wrench loosen the four screws that's four screws here allow the gantry to touch on both sides and then screw it back in we're now ready to turn on the printer okay so switch the printer on it's doing its homing sequence it homes all the way to the top first. Now that it's done the initial setup testing we can go ahead and perform bed leveling. So we go maintenance, next and level bed. So we let it do its thing. The only downside of that of course is it does let the filament become slack. So adjust this to be the thickness of the paper. Okay, so that's the assisted bed leveling done. Um, if you ever have problems with bed leveling, then I have done a full video on bed leveling, manual bed leveling, uh, and you can watch that here. The next step is to set up the Z offset. So we go across. Uh, from level bed to Z offset. This time it is probing. You can see a red light come on when that magnetic touch probe triggers. suggested a value we then have to put a piece of paper underneath it and move this down or up until it's the thickness of a piece of paper in other words you want to feel a little bit of resistance but not too much and then in theory that should be uh, your bed level so you can save that and it's off again okay so now that's all set up we know that the few cables in here were spares so we've got a spare for Mr. Cable for the hot end. We've also got a spare end, end stop cable and two spare end stops. When we get to the included USB stick and memory card, I have been informed through the manual that there is a, a test print on here. So we just insert this through the side. And again, I'm noticing another little feature here at the side where this USB port used to go into, there used to be a gap. Uh, on the printer and when you come to put the card in it's very possible that you could lose the card in the printer so uh, I'd say that's happened to me at least five times on the on the other video printers I've had but they look to have printed a, a sort of cover in here so that you can't actually do that so that's that's great as well okay anyway so that's the memory card now inserted and uh, let's stick something on 20 millimeter box dot g code so 15 minutes okay let's get that print let's see how we get on I've only done this instruction in this manual, so it's quite a good way of seeing how well this printer would work for someone that had never done any printing before. Let's see how this goes. So presumably now doing the auto bed leveling. seems to have done the bed leveling and is heating up. Naturally I already have quite a few opinions about this printer but I'm going to reserve these for the review video which will follow in a few weeks. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already so you're notified when that video comes out. I'm really looking forward to reviewing this printer. 
in that following video. Um, so I hope you do stay tuned for that one. Anyway, that's it from me. We'll run to B-roll in a second and you can watch the finished print of this. Uh, but until next time guys, that's it from me and I hope to see you next time. Cheers.